It's open to the spirit within you and, and say, teach me, show me how to live as if there is no world. Let me be so interdirected that I don't have to adjust and adapt to the world. I can, it can just be given to me. Because uh, people will say, how can you live without judgment? That's not practical. What if it's given to you moment by moment? Uh, you know, that's the internal way is the way to live. You know, you can move through at time and space seemingly as if you're in the world without uh, feeling a part of it. You know, that's, that's the answer to be in the world but not of it. You know, it was in the Bible. That as if. So, so I think it's very, very practical. You, you start to realize that this hearing this voice and, and getting these intuitions and this guidance is so important because you can move through the world, so to speak, as if there is no world. You can be lighthearted. You know, you don't have to worry about being early or late. You don't have to worry about uh, what's going to happen. Uh, we were just talking with Raj and Susan, they were sharing about the, the story when they were in Manhattan and uh, there was an anthrax scare and while they were, they, they were the last ferry to get over there and, and then all of a sudden they had this whole thing that unfolded and they found out kind of second hand all this stuff that was happening but, but we were clueless to it and just really oblivious to it and that's why I use the Mr. Magoo a lot, you know, Mr. Magoo is is, is so happy, but he really is clueless. He's kind of living as if there's no world, you know, as if there's no danger, as if there's no fear, you know. And it just radiates out, you know, and it's, it doesn't matter then if your parents think you're crazy. It doesn't matter what people seem to say or think, you know, you have this gentleness about you, this sense of warmth and glowing welcome and friendliness. That, that just will, in the end, wins over everyone. Uh, regardless of where they seem to start, you know, the, the love is so strong, it just wins them over. It just swallows them up, <laughs> gobbles them up. <laughs> you know, there's no defense against it. So. so I think that's the thing where, whenever you have that doubt about, where is this going to take me, you know, it's very, very practical. You know, it's not what they say, airy-fairy kind of uh, wishful thinking. Uh, the ego is wishful thinking. <coughs> this, is, this is very solid. This is not a blind faith at all. It's, it's something that's worthy of your devotion. And, uh, and you shall know by your experience how it feels. It was such a, a big turnover for me when I really did this, when I was able to pack even my, give my, oh, I don't want to keep my grandmother, I was like holding on stick them in the pocket and they're like, no, no, the Spirit says, I need the whole deck. Mm -hmm. This has to be a total re-deal. Uh, you can't hold on to anything. And it's, it's a, it seems like a leap of faith when you hand the deck over. That's kind of like with the past. You're really handing over the purpose of the past. It's not that you won't see these people again. I was even told by the Holy Spirit, some of the old cards will come back, but they will come back completely new. Uh, you will see them in a new way. You will see them in a, in a way that's blessed. And, and some of the cars will disappear, uh, you know, so it was, it was that trust of, okay, I'm not in charge of that, I will let you deal the deck, I will let you bring the witnesses into my life, and, and it's been glorious because there's been thousands of people, you're all, you know, dealt back to me, it's a wonderful experience to have these blessings of love, and it was really impactful because I remember talking with Suze about this, and it was just the <coughs> point where where her son had been kind of arrested on, I guess the equivalent over here of DUI, driving, drunk, drunk driving, many times. This, many times. this was almost like, may throw, they may throw the book oh, at him, throw him in, throw away the key. He was going to court on Monday morning and he was either going to jail or not. And after that story, you know, Sue's just was guided to call and the spirit from handing over the deck, could yeah. speak through, not as a worried mother, yeah, not I, at I all. I realized that what, what, what I would, it was funny because David came to stay with us, and I had, what happened with my son, he was, he was arrested for that, and then let, you know, just go free, pending the court case, 
and it took almost two and a half months for it to come up. So he had a long time to burn. It was incredible because it had never occurred to him that he would run out of luck. That he would use up all his chances. And he came to stay with me and he's an incredibly good looking boy. And he was so terrified of going to jail. He knew what was waiting on the other side. And he was staying with me and everything and we'd be having really good fun and he would look at me and I would just feel like the fear run down over him like ice and his eyes would fill up with tears and he just would have to go away and be on his own for a while because he was so frightened. And coming the weekend before his court case, I knew he wasn't getting a lot of support from anybody. I was in Queensland, he was down in Victoria and his, he kind of burnt his bridges with his brother. His brother gave him a morning but didn't really want to stay and support him. And his dad wasn't supporting him much either. So we were talking, they telephoned a lot over the weekend. Anyhow, I, well, David was staying with us and I was not sharing this. And Raj said to me in the end, I was kind of running upstairs, sobbing my heart out, splashing my face and going back downstairs and trying to be the jolly hostess, you know. It was really, really incredible. And in the end, Raj said, you've got to tell David. So we were sitting down in, in the office and we shared this and he shared the story with me and I really got it <coughs> in the core of my being. And I knew that what I needed to do was shift to a place to absolutely trust God. If it was Ben's highest good to go to jail, that I needed to be there absolutely in love with that possibility. I had to absolutely trust God and say, whatever happens, I, I, I really give up control. I give it over to you. And it, and it had to be true. It had to not be, if I pretend, give it over. I really, with every cell in my body, had to say, you know, I give him back to you. And it, it had an incredible happy ever after. Yeah, the cascading miracles came from it. Every time I would talk with her, she would say, you wouldn't believe, on the way to the court case, he met this woman, and he was in such joy and certainty that he said, if I don't get, jail, don't go to jail, can I take you out for dinner, out for dinner? <laughs> and this and this, and she's like, yeah, yeah, well, guess yeah, who, the, guess who he's with. <laughs> so, <laughs> he, he, they're engaged, he, he did get a sentence, a three month sentence that was commuted for 18 months good behavior, he had to, he was on a, a, a parole, probate thing, whatever you call that. He lost his license for four years, which was so perfect. All from one thing, handing it over. Yeah. I am not going to be worried and concerned about this. We've talked with, with Una, that's like a, the, we had that one-on-one, -on -one, and there's been like cascading miracles that came from just handing it over. And people say, well, what, what does it mean to hand it over? We mean really hand it over. We mean don't think that your worry and concern is actually benefiting uh, the people and the situation. You know, they used to joke about the, the, the worrying uh, Jewish mother. Uh, kind of said, you know, don't think that, that worry ever did add anything to anyone's life. Yeah, snags everything down. Worry's like a rocking chair. It goes back and forth and goes nowhere. Well, what if we were to say that when you're handing the 52 car pickup back, that the real essence of that is the attachment to those relationships? Yes, the attachment, the control. Uh, it's really, I would say that, that the way that ego set up the world. It's, it's loaded with past associations, you know, almost in a karmic kind of sense, you know, where, you know, the people that you meet, it's like you've met them over and over and over, like the deja vu thing. You're just replaying the same unholy instant. Uh, and when you come to the world and you just play by the ego's rules, you just find grievance after grievance after grievance. It's like in the Bible when even Jesus would talk about forgiving he would say things like, forgive 70 times 7.